Turbo Trading with head trader Robert Knight, MBA. All right, this is a talk. It's uh, January 25th, 2022. This is a talk on where we put our orders in uh, both buying and selling uh, stocks. And I'm going to try and talk about fast moving stocks and, you know, ones that have you have more time on. Uh, let's see. This morning, this is the C, S, sorry, S R R A had a big spike in the pre market up to 30 and then pulled back to 20, opened at 24, sold off. And then it started to, it started to pop. So, and this is, we talked about this before, this, uh, pattern. I talked about this pattern before where, um, or th this type of opening where it's gaps up strong in the market and then sells off sharply at the opening. And this is sort of the, where the amateurs are trading. They get whacked out. The people in the know, uh, wait for the pullback. And here's your first pullback entry up right here at 20. Three. Now you had to be very quick to catch this. So the question is, this one is trading with a seven cent, um, a seven cent spread. So on a stock like this, if I want to buy this, but it's moving very quickly, I do, I do one of two things. Well, I never put in a market order. Uh, it's too dangerous, uh, especially with a seven cent spread. But what I might do is if I get a signal, okay, here's my $23 entry. I'll put in an order. I'll have my orders ready, and I just so that I just need to push the button. And I'll I'll have an order set up maybe at twenty three oh five, maybe twenty three ten, and and then I'll I'll when I see it break through my uh, the, my buy order level at twenty three, then I'll push the button. So I have ten cents slippage. So I'll get filled somewhere between twenty three and twenty three ten. If I miss it. And it moves past that and goes, then I do, I've missed the trade. I don't chase it. I don't try and go after it again. Um, you just, you, you, you set your area that you want to buy. If you don't get it, then you go on to the next trade. You don't chase these stocks. Because what if you chased it to 24 here and then it pulled back to, and then it sharply pulled back to 23 and a half and you think, you think, ah, crap, I'm, I got, you know, I, I, bought this and it's going to sell off. I better get out of it. And so you could get whipsawed. So the key is to, to, if it's, if your entry is your ultimate or your optimum entry is 23, then you have your order ready with a five cent slippage, a 10 cent slippage, um, 23, 10, put it in, you'll get filled and you could have caught, then you could have caught the top. Now, this brings in another question here that then it's halted. What do you do now? Where do you, where do you do? Typically, if you wanted to take some profit in here, you could put the order in below, just below the offer, pre before it opens. You could put it in just below it or just above it because in all likelihood, when it opens, it's going to spike or, or drop some before it goes. In this case, it did spike. Now, if you had to put the order in too high above it, you, would have, you wouldn't have got filled, but it was halted at 25.44, so I'd maybe put the order in it. 25.50 or 25.60 or maybe even down here 25.35. And so when it opened and it opened higher, uh, I would have got filled at the 25, because this is where it opened, at 25.60. So even though I had my order in at 25.30, I would have got filled at the 25.60 level. And if I want, I, so I would be looking to, on the first halt, I'd be looking to piece a little bit out if I had bought this at the 23 area 23 and change um, and then when it came off but when it's dropping like this you need to just you do need to almost just to mark it out or you know put in an order um, you know say it's dropping and you want to stop it at 25 so you put in an order 2470 and you'll get and you should get filled if you miss it well you know that's one of the problems with trading these kind of volatile stocks, you have to be ready to trade them and, you know, maybe have hotkeys to get out in time. But you could, I mean, I have a panic button and it's a 20 cent slippage. So it puts it in at the bid plus 20 cents. And so you probably would have got out of this. 
uh, this trade at the, by doing that. So you put a little bit in just below or just above where it gets halted if you want to get some off. And uh, then if it spike, if it opens spiked up, you're in it. And if it spikes down, you got, you have to be ready to, you know, to bail, hit your panic button. So that's if the market's moving very quickly. Those are some, some ideas. Uh, if it's a slower move, like in here, um, you know, and, and it's just starting to, to move up a bit, but it does have some range, you know, 20, 30 cents range. I, I find out where my, um, where my entry level, you know, what I'm looking for for an entry level. And maybe on, you know, so then I would put my order in maybe on this here on the cross over, you know, around 22.15. I'd just be on the bid or let's see, you know, if it pulled back in here and I was looking to buy some. You know, I, I just I put it in around where these moving averages are, the, the 34 period and the 50 period, and just go on the bid because if I, in the, the platform I trade with, if I buy on the bid, I don't pay any commission. If I buy on the offer, uh, I pay half a cent. So I pay a penny round trip if I buy and sell on the offer and on the bid. If I buy on the offer and sell on the bid, I pay a penny round trip. If I just bid for it, I don't pay commission. So, you know, depending on where it is, I mean, this one has a pretty big spread here now. Uh, well, it's, it's tightened up a penny, but it does, you know, seven, eight cents sometimes. So you just look for your optimum entry level for this stock. Um, you know, on a pullback, maybe you're thinking, okay, it's going to trade back to 23. So I'll put a bid in at 23, maybe 22.95 in case they sell it off. So I'll buy half at 23, half at 22.95. Um, which is the 50 period moving average and you know play from there and then if but if it goes against me i got to stop out at 20 2275 um so i'd have my sell order ready for that level and but and then you know so if, if i saw the starting go looks like it might trade so i would be in here at the 2295 i put my order in get the bid because it was trading up here at over 23 i got filled at 2295 and then, you know, we'll just see how it plays out. Um, I'm not saying that this uh, the stock I'm trading, this, I'm just, hypothetically, this is where I would, you know, put my order in. It's in a rising channel like this. It's coming into the apex of a wedge. Well, maybe this is the wedge now like this. So I wait for it to pull back. I put my entry in, my order in, I get filled. Now, if it's moving quickly, then some, you know, then you can buy the breakout. Now, in, in soft markets like this, seldom do I try to buy the breakout because uh, you, you get too many fake moves. You're better off to try and buy it at your risk level. And this is your risk level here, the 295, 2295. Maybe, maybe your risk level is here, 285. So you put your order in at 295. Stop it under 285 because that's the risk level you're prepared to take, and then you know look to sell some out. And then if it really starts to pop here, you know you can offer the stock at 23.48. Now, quite often I'll penny dig. I knew that I know that there's um, uh, 23.50 is going to be a natural resistance for it. 24 is going to be natural resistance for it. So if I'm look if this stock is you know trending up and I'm looking to sell some, then I'll offer it at 23.48. And, and and you'll see a lot of sellers at 2350. So you you penny dig them. You 2347, 2348. You'll normally get it off quite often up here. At, uh, you know I'd offered it between 2396 and 2398, depending maybe 2393 and 2398, depending on you know how fast it's moving. And you you get you'd be surprised how often you get filled when you do that. But if you don't and it starts to roll over. You need to to cancel that order and, and you know re and put in your next order, you know hit the bid uh, with a you know five or ten cent slippage. Um, so there's some techniques that you can you can use if it's moving fast, you know put in some slippage. If it's halted, put it in. A, if you want to sell some, put it in around the where it was halted in that area, and just get what you get. It, you know when you do that. Um, and then if it's quiet, if the market's quieting down, it's coming into the range you want to buy it, then just go on the bid, 
and and hope for it. But if it starts to move, then you got to go on the offer. Just you know, buy it on the offer. But don't chase it. That's the key. Don't chase it. You just buy it on the offer. If it's a you know small spread, penny or two, three, four, you know, you start getting a ten cent spread, then you you have to go on the bid because if you go on the offer, all of a sudden you're down ten cents already. You know, that's a big part of your risk. So the, the tighter the spread, the um, the tighter the spread, the more the easier it is to you know to go on the bid or sorry on the to buy it on the offer, sell it on the bid. I mean, if it's you know just a penny spread, and you know it's a half a cent commission for me, I just hit the bid, get you know get out, just get it done. If I'm if this is the price I want to sell, if unless it's running up to my to my sell area, but if it's if it's a stock I just want to get out of, or you know I've lost my patience with it, or I've got a little bit left, or you know it's just trading sideways, I'm bored with it, you know a lot of reasons, then I just hit the bid, and. Now, if you're trading huge size, you might you have to be a little bit more careful with that. But I'm not trading. I'm not trading big enough size to affect the market. You know, five, ten thousand shares is doesn't doesn't change the market on it. If it's a liquid stock. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.